Good morning, students. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Can you hear me properly? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we were discussing circuit breakers. Okay. So the basic, uh, what is a circuit breaker? The definition, why circuit breakers are used, all those things we have studied. And in the latter half, we have discussed about the arc phenomena in a circuit breaker, how the arc is initiated and the, how the arc is maintained. Okay. And what are the types of, uh, wh how, why the arc is created and maintained, by what type of collision. So there are mainly two types of collisions. So that we discussed in the last class. So we will start with the arc phenomena today. Now, arc is established when the circuit breaks are Okay. Now, this is the characteristics of the arc. Say V, say V arc is a function of I arc, function of current. So the characteristic is like this. It is nonlinear. Okay. Now this is called the Atkins equation A plus B D plus C plus capital D small d by I arc. Now small d is the length of the arc. That means length of the arc means length of the separation. Okay, because arc is established in that separation. Now, so this is the equation. So this A and C by I arc, these are the cathode and anode voltages and the term that is associated with length of the That voltage is the voltage drop across the length, okay. So this is the equation. Now, the equation is get, uh, it gets modified for short arc and long arc. Short arc means when the arc length is small. Okay, so this equation is getting modified like this. That means the coefficients which are there with that the arc length, that is for long arc because this portion becomes negligible with respect to this one. You can see this will be clear from the this curve, since this is the voltage across short arc, you can see this is the anode voltage, this is the, sorry, this is the cathode voltage, this is the anode voltage. So this portion is the anode voltage, this portion is the cathode voltage, and the voltage across the arc is very small. Okay, only this part. So it is called short arc. And for long arc, this voltage has a considerable value, okay, with respect to the cathode voltage and the anode voltage. Now, so these are the characteristics for long arc and short arc. So the equations are getting modified for long arc. This is negligible and for short arc, this part becomes negligible as D becomes negligible. Now, the dynamic characteristics of the arc. One minute. Yes. So, what is the dynamic characteristics of the arc? See, when the circuit breaker contacts are separated, it is not like that it will go on separating and the arc will die down or extinguish by the natural process. Okay. It is extinguished by some artificial means. That's why circuit breaker is used. Maybe there is some gas like SFCs or maybe your blast is used or maybe oil is used, etc. Okay. So normally under static condition, no dynamic changes there, the curve is shown by the bold line. But there is some deviation in nature 
in the actual operation of circuit breaker this deviation in the nature of arc can be explained by ionization of the arc discharge because you know ionization takes place because ionization is responsible for the maintenance of the arc so its intensity actually determines the magnitude of the current if the current increases suddenly a certain time lapse is necessary before the static before the state of ionization adapts itself to the new conditions okay hence as the current increases ionization always corresponds to the current which was previously flowing through the arc okay because the even if the current increases the ionization will not increase instantaneously it will the ionization will correspond to the current previously flowing through the arc okay that means the degree of ionization is smaller instantaneously so also the resistance of the discharge path and the current cause a greater voltage drops see the curve shifts to this position okay when the current increases the voltage drop increases so under dynamic condition it will follow path 1 now when the current decreases then it will follow path 2 okay the degree of ionization corresponds to a current larger than that which at the given moment flows through the arc okay because when the current decreases the ionization will not change instantaneously it the ionization will correspond to the larger current that was flowing so it will change like this okay so this is the dynamic nature now arc characteristics when the current is zero the uh, this is maximum and when it is the current is maximum it is almost constant of oh. becomes really okay so this is the static condition this is a dynamic condition when the voltage increases voltage is as it as it at its highest value and v arc is i arc into r arc r arc because the path is actually resistive in nature now if the current remains constant suppose the arc current remains constant actually in actual practice arc current does not remain constant okay arc current is gradually it is it becomes zero then only we can say the arc has extinguished but if the uh, if if we assume that if somehow the arc is kept constant then this voltage in every cycle will go on increasing okay because the resistance will be increased now the general definition of arc energy this is a general definition of arc energy v arc integration of 0 to t v arc into i arc dt now v arc is given by the eltons equation this is this equation we have already seen now the energy the mean arc energy may be expressed as now for long arc and short arc they have different expressions from long for long arc you know if the average current what will the average current i arc is the rms value okay and the form factor for sinusoidal wave form is 1.11 so average current is this rms value by 1.11 into vd by 2 this is the arc length now for long arc this will exist i told you the coefficient with d will exist and this one actually becomes vd by 2 the average value of this one becomes vd by 2 as it is not dependent on I, i arc and for this one dd by i arc this value we neglect so it becomes d by s okay and the, this is the mean average current this is the mean arc voltage and this is the time okay so this part is neglected so vd by 2 into d by s d is the arc length and what is the s s is the speed of operation so we get the time and for short arc this a is considered a plus vd by 2 a is constant okay it is the anode voltage cathode voltage becomes negligible so we neglect this one so it becomes for this is the equation for short arc okay 
but in general you if all the values are given you should express you should uh, remember this equation okay now see this is an example circuit breaker arc length is given uh, speed is given voltage drop per centimeter of arc length is 650 when interrupting 15 kiloampere current calculate arc energy liberated in kilowatt second okay so according to the values given it is not mentioned whether it is long arc or short short arc but according to the values given you should find out the expression okay so next different modes of energy dissipation now glow discharge you know when the dissipation is small then if you see a glow dis discharge or spark okay so corona is an example of glow, glow discharge the minimum and spark occurs when the energy is very low when the energy is little bit high then we call it glow discharge and when the the energy dissipation is very high, then we call it arc phenomena. Now, arc extinction depends on, you can easily understand, the speed of contact separation in circuit breaker. We are talking about circuit breaker. Cooling of the arc helps deionization. That means cooling of the arc means when the ionized particles, are um, they recombine to form neutral molecules, then we call it cooling of the arc. Blast effect. So, sometimes it is not possible to neutralize those ion, ionized particles we just blow them off from the, that part okay so there are three methods that we'll study later on also because you can understand that in air blast circuit, circuit breaker what happens we uh, blow compressed air and that compressed air air will sweep away all the ionized particles from that arc part and uh, this cooling of the arc it is actually recombination. It occurs in sulfur SF6 circuit breaker. Okay. So SF6 is known as electron scavenger. So it uh, absorbs and it actually decreases the ionization process. Now the types of operating mechanism. Am I audible properly? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma okay, thank you. So, types of operating mechanism, that means operating mechanism is the uh, closing and separation of the moving contact, okay. So, sometimes the closing and op opening operation is done by spring, okay. Closing spring charged by motor driven gear, gear. Clo during closing opening springs are charged. The springs which are open, these are charged and the, then these are Closed. So both the opening and closing operation is done by the um, spring action. Now next, pneumatically closed and spring open. Here closing operation is performed by pneumatic cylinder and piston. Okay. So um, local air receiver mounted inside the mechanism cubicle. So that is one air uh, um, receiver. That means there is one compressed chamber okay from where the compressed air is there and it helps in closing the contact but during opening or the opening operation is done by the spring action and this is solenoid closed spring open here also opening operation is done by the spring action but the closing operation is done by the solenoid a solenoid system energized by direct current the solenoid attracts the plunger which sets the link mechanism in motion for closing purpose okay so solenoid has maximum force of attraction when plunger is fully inserted and the air gap is minimum because that solenoid uh, that uh, solenoid will um, that force will help to keep the moving contact in close contact with the fixed contact okay and the opening operation is done by the spring action. Now, this is the pneumatic operating mechanism. Okay, here both the opening and closing action is done by the compressed air. So, it is, uh, uh, you will see that occurs in air blast circuit breakers. And lastly, hydraulic mechanism can be there. Oil at high pressure is used for closing and opening operation in motor driven 
you, uh, you uh, that high pressure is uh, generated by motor driven hydraulic pump now now we will find out we'll discuss in details actually what happens to the voltage across the contacts and the current across the contacts why this arc phenomena um, is dangerous okay why we need to extinguish the arc that means what is the basic um, basic necessity of of applying this circuit breaker why cannot we use just a fuse all these things you will understand here because there is a huge um, voltage developed across that contacts and that voltage may be dangerous it is almost a twice can be twice the value of the peak voltage okay so we need to calculate all these things and derive expressions for the voltage that appears across the circuit breaker contacts okay so for that let us start with the basic equation system current under sudden short circuit you know uh, under sudden short circuit you know this expression this expression is already known to you have learned this expression um, for sudden short circuit at what alternator terminals so this expression is known to you okay so we'll start with this expression ri plus ldi dt equal to em sin omega t plus this epsilon okay so this is actually this will become zero when the short circuit occurs when the current is at zero position and this will be 90 degree when the short circuit occurs at maximum value now first we'll consider now this expression i think this expression is well known to you because you have already derived this expression if you don't remember now you please go through your um, books or the far circuit at alternate terminus i think you will get this expression so though this derivation is how we are getting this expression from this one though it is not shown here but you should uh, go through it okay now short circuit at voltage zero that means when this value becomes zero okay so at t equal to zero what is the value this is actually you can understand this is a dc component because it is not dependent on omega okay so this is a dc component we call this a dc component so when both of these are zero that means short circuit occurs at voltage zero then obviously this becomes zero so what is the expression i this is zero means actually at time zero this does not mean that this is zero this means at time zero so at time zero, what is the DC component? DC component, this becomes one and this becomes, this is zero. So simply this is minus, so minus minus becomes plus. So plus sine phi and along with that, this will remain. And the AC component will be this one. Okay, you put this one zero, actually it will be omega t minus phi, sine omega t minus phi, but if we find out the value at zero, then we put t equal to zero, it becomes minus of this one, because sine of minus phi, that becomes like this. Okay. Now, if r is much less than omega l, then we can neglect r, and we can write this IDC, the DC component, when the short circuit occurs at zero, the DC component at time 0 is this one and AC component at time 0 is this one. So, at uh, the total current will be this one plus this one. So, at 0, you can find out, find out that this one plus this one becomes 0. So, it will start from 0. So, the curve is like this. This is already known to you. We have already gone through this curve in the previous semester. Please go through it again. So this is the DC component. This is the this is the DC component. It will decay exponentially because its expression you can easily understand. Its expression is e to the power minus r by L T. So plus the symmetrical component AC component. If you add those two, you will get this curve. The resultant curve is this one. And you know that when the DC component becomes zero, it will be steady state condition will be reached. So it will continue like this. But initially it is very high. How much? Because you know, the DC component is this one and AC component, initial value of DC component is EM by omega L and that of AC is minus EM by omega L. So magnitude of both of them is EM by omega L. But what happens when the DC component is EM by omega L, 
the ac component maximum value is also m by omega l but as they occur in different instance the maximum value of uh, ac will occur here so at that time dc component has decreased so instead of getting the value of twice m by omega l because you can understand if we add these two you will get twice m by omega l so its value will not be twice m by omega l because by that time this dc component has decreased to some value so it is taken instead of twice m by omega l it is taken 1.8 m by omega l okay so this is known as doubling effect but reality it does not become twice it becomes 1.8 okay times the maximum peak value now this portion is understood hello yes ma'am actually ma this is a, yes bolo uh, use the color ha huh? ম্যাম একটু কালারটা দেখাতে পারবেন পয়েন্ট করে আন্ডারলাইন করে কালারটা ইউজ করেন কালার কালার ইউজ করে হ্যাঁ ম্যাম আমি ওই দেখতে পাচ্ছি না মানে যেগুলো দেখাচ্ছেন না ওইগুলো একটু ওই কালারটা ইউজ করলে একটু দেখতে ভালো হয় কালার কি করে ইউজ করব আমি সেটা বুঝতে পাচ্ছি না তোমার কি মানে ভিশনে কি একটু প্রবলেম আছে না ম্যাম তো দেখতে পাচ্ছ কি ইকুয়েশন here we will have sin of minus 5 because this is zero now you find out when dash the dc component and ac component component at t equal to zero then you will get this expression and this expression okay now the dc component when uh, the at volt when the volt when the short circuit occurs at Uh, the volt when the voltage is zero then it becomes the dc component because min e to the power minus of e to the power minus r by lt sin of minus phi of course this part will be there so it will what will be the value em by root over r square r square r we neglect so it will become em by omega l e to the power minus r by lt sin phi because this minus and this minus will become plus okay now if if we put at t equal to 0 this uh, we find out dc component at t equal to 0 it will become this one and ac component will remain this one okay the normal expression for ac component will be em by em by omega l sin of omega t minus phi okay so it is almost constant so the ac component is actually this one and dc component is actually this one okay now if we add the ac component this component and this component will get this bold line this curve okay just by adding the dc component and ac component we are getting this curve okay now what i told what is doubling effect actually we will be concerned with the maximum value of the voltage across the circuit breaker contacts what can be the maximum value of the voltage okay may be momentarily but that may be enough to damage the breaker so 
we must be concerned about the maximum value so the maximum value will occur here okay so what will be the value see if the maximum point it occurs here then it would have been m by omega l plus m by omega l because you see the maximum value of both the ac component and the dc component are m by omega l so the magnitude would have been twice m by omega l but what happens when the ac component is maximum ac component is maximum here but at that point this dc component is not m by twice l it has decreased to some value m by omega l it has decreased to some value so instead of twice m by omega l we write 1 by 8 m by omega l okay so you please this phenomena you go through your uh, previous semester books you will find these expressions are given there okay so you'll be able to understand if you cannot you please contact me but after reading through the from your books now the next phenomena will consider the short circuit occurs when the voltage is at its maximum value so that this expression is again written so that this is 90 degree so if this is 90 degree what is the ac component it is em by omega l sin 90 degree plus omega t minus phi okay so it becomes cos of omega t minus phi uh, cos of omega t minus phi and this one will become 90 degree minus phi it becomes cos of phi okay so uh, so what is the dc component this component this component is em by here they have written uh, this r square plus omega l square and it will be this part at t equal to 0 they have given the expression directly at t equal to 0 first you find out the dc component at any instant so if you write at any instant then this will be there and with this there will be 1 e to the power minus ri by t okay now putting t equal to 0 this expression becomes this one and this expression becomes this one em by root over r square plus omega l square cos phi what is the ac component the ac component of will be this one into sin of omega t plus 90 degree minus phi now if we want to find out the ac component at t equal to 0 this omega t will become 0 only this expression will be there and this expression will be there okay now when r is less than equal to omega t uh, much less than equal to omega, uh, omega l that means r is neglected then phi you know phi becomes 90 degree okay because all the fault current circuit breakers operate under fault condition only and the fault currents are always lagging it is almost 90 degree so this phi becomes 90 degree when phi becomes 90 degree this dc component is becoming 90 zero uh, because cos phi equal to zero okay dc component is becoming zero and the ac component of course will exist but at t equal to zero it becomes zero okay but you think about the dc component even when you write the expression the general expression for the dc component will be em by omega l e to the power min uh, there will be one minus sign minus em by omega l e to the power minus r by l t cos phi okay so phi is 90 degrees so cos phi is always zero so at every instant of time this dc component will become zero okay so it will have no dc component okay only symmetrical current will be there clear yeah. so the dangerous condition occurs when the short circuit occurs at voltage zero and the safest condition is that when the short circuit occurs at voltage 90 degree that means the at that time there is no dc component okay it is not like that the dc component is zero only at t equal to zero the dc component is always zero when the short circuit occurs at voltage peak now this is an example given see th these examples you go through it thoroughly because some typical examples are only given and the concept you will have clear concept about the 
this um, phenomena okay that is taking place in the circuit breaker now see three phase fault with maximum asymmetry okay i told you when maximum asymmetry occurs it occurs when the, the voltage is at its zero value so occurs three phase this is the voltage rating of the circuit breaker the rms value of symmetrical fault current is 7070 okay this is a symmetrical fault current actually the fault current is asymmetrical in nature it is the uh, vector summation of the symmetrical component and the dc component okay see from this expression you can understand if you want to find find out the magnet no this is not given here okay we'll show later on so this is a peak value of the symmetrical fault current that means steady state current okay and making capacity is 18 kilo ampere see it is given in ampere so instead of making capacity it should be written making current anyway if it is written making capacity you should understand that it is the making current what is the making current it is the peak value of the first loop current that means making current is actually this current okay the peak value of the first loop current and what is the rms value given that rms value is actually this value okay so these two values are given this is actually 18 kilo ampere given and this value is actually given as 7070 ampere it is this rms not the peak value the peak value will be root 2 into 7070 okay now the doubling factor you have to find out what is the doubling factor doubling factor is actually the making current divided by the peak value of the symmetrical current okay making current divided by peak value of the symmetrical current i show you by the figure you will be able to understand doubling current is actually this peak value divided by this peak value okay it is it is almost equal to 2 but not um, actually not equal to 2 it is less than equal to 2 it is nearly equal to 2 but less than equal to 2 that I, that i told you why it is not exactly 2 okay so making current you please remember what is making current though we'll discuss the ratings later on also but making current is very important okay so first this is the general expression now from the general expression the it is uh, we will consider maximum value that means maximum asymmetry for maximum asymmetry this will become equal to zero and this will be the expression for this i for maximum asymmetry okay now this value and for as r is considered almost equal to 0 then phi equal to 90 degree because under all conditions if it is not mentioned you will consider r to be negligible with respect to l and if r is negligible with respect to l this phi becomes almost equal to 90 degree because what is phi from the expression it is omega l by r okay so so now you find out this is the expression for i now for maximum asymmetry this will become 1 okay maximum value it will become 1 the whole thing will become 1 so also omega t should be equal to minus 1 okay to have the maximum value of the current that is that is called the maximum asymmetry so cos omega t equal to minus 1 from there you find out what is t then substitute the value of t here in the original expression so asymmetrical current you will get this one okay this is the asymmetrical current total current now you are asked to find out the doubling factor doubling factor you can find out from the expressions itself because doubling factor i told you this value divided by the peak symmetrical value so root 2 into 7070 so this is the doubling factor it is 1.8 it is not like that it will become always 1.8 but it should be less than or equal to 2 in most in almost all case it should be actually less than 2 okay so doubling factor you can find out next what you need to find out let's see you need to find out the time constant of the circuit okay time constant of the circuit see you can find out from this expression asymmetrical current you have got doubling factor you have got now doubling factor is peak asymmetrical current by peak symmetrical current so what is peak asymmetrical current it will be this one okay this is the peak asymmetrical current divided by the 
big symmetrical current. Okay, so this is the expression. So from here, it you you know the value of doubling factor from this example. Actually, we are using two equations for doubling factor. Okay, one by the values given in the problem, another from the equation. Why are we, we are using the equation? Because we need to find out the time constant. R and L are not known to us. So this is the doubling factor. We put it equal to 1.8 and then we find out R by L. Then we find out L by R. So the time constant we can find out. See, if you don't solve these problems by your own, you will never get a clear, clear concept. Maybe you will think now, yes, we have understood, but while solving, you won't be able to solve. So it is very important that you take your pen and paper and uh, solve this problem. The last one, the asymmetrical braking capacity, assuming that the circuit breaker contacts just open after three cycles from the initiation of the fall. So three cycles, that means the DC component will obviously decrease after three cycles. So you find out the DC component after three cycles. So three cycles means you find out what is the time. 50 cycles means one second. So three cycles means three by 50. So you put t equal to 3 by 50. So find out what is the DC component after the after three cycles. Okay. And you find out the asymmetrical component, the symmetrical value plus the this DC value. This is really square. So find out this value. And as you are asked to find out the breaking capacity, you must multiply this current by the voltage. Okay. So breaking capacity means total breaking capacity. So root 3. VL, IL. Okay, so we use this 11. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you please solve these problems. Okay, these problems are very important. Unless you go through the problems, only go through the theory part, you will not be able to get a very clear, clear picture. Now, okay, ma'am. Now, this term is very important, the recovery voltage. What is the recovery voltage? Recovery voltage is the normal uh, frequency for RMS value. Normal frequency means at 50 hertz. See, when the transient phenomena occurs, the arc, arc is extinguished, arc is established, the frequency changes. But the, you will, we will show you how the frequency changes. The recovery voltage is the normal frequency RMS voltage that appears across the context of circuit breaker after final arc extinction. That means first the circuit breaker contacts are opening when fault is occurring. So arc is established. Now after some time arc will be extinguished. So after the arc is extinguished that the voltage that is established across the contacts that is called the recovery voltage okay that means when the arc has been extinguished that voltage is the normal 50 hertz frequency voltage so actually first see the curve then we'll see this figure what happens the arc is extinguished when the current is zero and as it is lagging in nature so voltage will be the maximum value Okay, so when the voltage is at its maximum value, so what happens, see, this value is striking voltage, this value can, is increased, okay. For some time, there is some oscillation of very high frequency transient, so this value, this is called the striking voltage. What is the striking voltage? Because whenever the current is, arc current is getting zero, huge voltage is established, that voltage is called restriking voltage. That voltage may be enough to restrike the arc. That means re-establish the arc. Okay. So restriking voltage is a transient voltage that appears across the contacts of a circuit breaker at current zero during arcing. Okay. So when the volt current becomes zero, permanently current cannot current. It is not like that the arc is extinguished, current is zero. So momentarily when the current is zero, the voltage can be very high and that voltage can reinitiate the arc. Okay. And the recovery voltage is the system voltage. After the arc is extinguished, the voltage that appears across the contacts, that means when it is open. Okay. When it is closed, it is short circuit. No voltage will be there. So when it is open, the normal frequency voltage 
that is appearing across the contacts that is called the recovery voltage now so let us find out the equation for this thing say we see we'll start with this one recovery voltage i told you recovery voltage is the normal frequency rms voltage that appears across the contacts of circuit breaker when there is final arc extinction okay finally the arc is extinguished now see when initially this will be closed now whenever that is a fault this will be open okay now whenever this is open actually what happens the voltage across this contact is the voltage across this um, capacitor okay now when the voltage so we will start with the equation this ld idt plus 1 by c idt equal to v v is the voltage that, uh, that is it is a constant voltage it is known as active recovery voltage okay so for a very brief, very brief transient period v can be taken as constant and equal to the active recovery voltage this is a normal system voltage okay but the instantaneous voltage system voltage always varies isn't it it is very it is magnitude will vary sunny suddenly so uh, we consider is active recovery voltage it is a fixed value voltage okay so we'll start with this equation so this is constant at particular value of voltage see this voltage can be here this is the active recovery voltage okay see this is the active recovery voltage okay so it has a fixed value so it is vr by s then uh, by taking the laplace transform this one will be there then laplace transform and then what is vrs vrs is the voltage across the capacitor okay this voltage will be the voltage across the circuit breaker contacts okay so i into this is into 1 by cs so ultimately you will arrive to this equation okay now taking inverse laplace function we will get this value please do it by yourself this laplace transform function in inverse laplace transform function because you have uh, done enough of it so ultimately this will be the equation and what is omega omega equal to 1 by root lc so this is the natural frequency of oscillation so what is the frequency of this oscillation actually this is the frequency of this of oscillation you can understand it is very high with respect to that of the normal frequency so this is the natural is called the natural frequency of oscillation okay so this is the voltage across the capacitor when the, there is arc, so this is the mm, frequency of oscillation and after the arc is extinguished, it will follow the normal recovery voltage. Now, after final arc extinction at current zero, the voltage across the contacts of a circuit breaker is composed of power frequency and high frequency transient components. Okay. The transient frequency component has a very high frequency and dies out rapidly after final arc extinction. And recovery voltage is the power frequency RMS voltage which appears across the contacts after final arc extinction. Okay, there will be no striking voltage when the arc is fully extinguished. Clear? Only the normal power frequency voltage will be there. Now, due to demagnetizing effect of armature reaction, this value, instead of becoming the twice of this value, instead of becoming actually twice, it cannot reach the twice value. It becomes slightly less than the twice value. Now, why I, I am saying it is reaching the twice the normal value? That also we will find out the magnitude of the destriking voltage okay just after some slides so this demagnetizing effect that means that we will study see this is the due to the demagnetizing effect since it, it decreases rapidly okay this value decreases rapidly first peak is here second peak is here now effect of operating condition on active recovery voltage so active recovery voltage means the power frequency voltage that is this is the active recovery voltage okay 
that means the power frequency voltage that is appearing uh, instantaneous recovery voltage at the instant of contact separation now see there is difference between recovery and active recovery voltage active recovery um, recovery voltage is the voltage that is appearing after the final arc extinction when this transient phenomena dies down then this is active recovery voltage and what is active recovery voltage active recovery voltage is the voltage that is instantaneous voltage at the in, across the breaker contacts just at the instant of contact separation i told you that at the instant of contact separation the volt the voltage gradient is very very high so the arc is initiated so the initial voltage that appears across the contacts at the instant of contact separation that is the active recovery voltage okay now it depends upon some phenomena see the active recovery voltage equal to v max sin theta okay vr is maximum when theta equal to 90 degree because you know the uh, why theta is equal to 90 degree the value of active recovery voltage depends upon power factor of the circuit okay the, this is the power factor. It depends upon the power factor of the circuit. For unity power factor load, the voltage and current are in phase and both are zero at the same instant. See, we are talking about active recovery voltage. So, active recovery voltage means this voltage. Okay. So, if the power factor were unity, can you say what is the difference? The difference would have been, no, it would have been not like this. The current and voltage will reach zero position at the same time. So when the current is zero, voltage is also zero. So you can understand if the power factor were one, then the it, um, it would have been started from here and this voltage would have been very less, isn't it? So, but what happens for zero power factor? For zero power factor, the voltage is maximum when the current is zero. So at that condition, this will have the highest value when the power factor is 90 degrees. So actually this is written like this, Vr equal to Vmax sine theta. So when theta equal to 90 degree, this Vr will be maximum. Okay. So if theta equal to 0 degree, this would have been almost 0. So power factor is very important in determining the um, active recovery voltage, okay? Now the demagnetizing effect of armature current, the short circuit currents flowing in the generator windings being of lagging power factor have a demagnetizing armature reaction, okay? Due to this demagnetizing effect, the EMF needs some time to regain its values, okay? Hence, the power frequency component of recovery voltage is slightly less than the normal value of system voltage. Now, effect of neutral grounding, okay, or neutral earthing. We'll consider that the neutral is earth, okay? This is the neutral is earth. Now, it may happen, say, there is a sh short circuit fault, three-phase short circuit fault, but it is not grounded. Okay, then what happens? If the three-phase short circuit fault is there, but it is not grounded, suppose this breaker contacts in phase R has opened. So what will happen? What is the voltage across this contact, separated contacts of the circuit breaker? This, this point will be equal to the voltage across this one. And this point will be across the voltage across this one. The circuit breakers are opened when current equal to zero voltage at its maximum value. So you have seen when the current equal to zero voltage is at its maximum value. So what will be the voltage across the breaker contacts? One point is here, another point is connected here. So the breaker contacts one point here, another point here. So this is almost one, this is actually V. If we consider the maximum value of V, this is 0.5 V. So the voltage across the breaker contacts is 1.5 V. Okay. So there can be three conditions. One condition, neutral grounded, fault not grounded. Next condition, 
न्यूट्रल नॉट ग्राउंडेड फॉल्ट ग्राउंडेड एंड थर्ड कंडीशन बोथ न्यूट्रल एंड फॉल्ट ग्राउंडेड सो वी हैव कंसीडर द फर्स्ट केस न्यूट्रल ग्राउंडेड फॉल्ट नॉट ग्राउंडेड ओके वी कैन सी दैट द एक्टिव रिकवरी वोल्टेज विल बी 1.5 टाइम्स द पीक वैल्यू ऑफ द वोल्टेज नाउ नेक्स्ट वी विल कंसीडर व्हेन द neutral is grounded also the fault is grounded can you see when the neutral is grounded this value is this one but this this point what is this point this point is actually arc point this is same as this point so the voltage across this breaker contacts will be same as the r phase voltage because this voltage is at this point is actually arc and this is also arc so the voltage across the breaker contacts is actually the r phase voltage so it is simply v only from here to here though it is shown here it is not like that it is from here to here so it is v now could you understand the difference between these two the first one and the second one how the voltage decreases when the fault is grounded and why it increases when the fault is not grounded yes ma'am and the third case when the neutral is not grounded it is same as that of the first case when the neutral is not grounded then it will again become 1.5 v because this point is grounded but this point is here and this point is not grounded whenever this becomes grounded this voltage becomes equal to this voltage but you see here it is not grounded so again it will become 1.5 v so there are actually four phenomena okay first one i told you power factor second one the armature reaction third one the um, circuit breaker uh, the fault conditions and the um, this condition actually the fault type of fault and the whether the neutral is grounded or not grounded this is third and fourth condition is there the current symmetry on the recovery voltage you can see from the figure existence of large dc component is favorable why see this is the current waveform oh okay so when the current is zero we consider zero percent asymmetry that means there is no dc component when the current is zero the voltage is at its maximum value so act, this is the active recovery voltage okay actually the favorable condition will be that when the active recovery voltage is low so when there is no dc component active recovery voltage is at its maximum suppose there is some dc component 30% of asymmetry okay then what will happen see the active component has decreased the active recovery voltage is this one instead of from here to here it has slightly decreased now if we increase the to 60% asymmetry that means more dc component the active recovery voltage will again decrease okay it will become like this so existence of large dc component in short circuit current may cause the recovery voltage wave to start near the zero point instead of its peak so ultimately if we go on increasing at one time it is possible that it is starting from almost zero position though it never happens but you can at least say when there is large asymmetry then the active voltage recovery the active recovery voltage decreases okay so these are the four conditions that we need to explain clearly so active recovery voltage should have instead of just writing v max sin theta it should have some components which will take care of the demagnetizing effect take care of the whether the neutral is grounded or the fault is grounded like that so these are the some constants given though k1 is nothing if you consider the phase 2 neutral it will be 1 if you consider phase 2 phase it will be root 3 that you know and this value of k2 it takes care of arc fault okay we consider the neutral to be arc so for arc fault this will be 1 and if it is not arc fault it will be 1.5 and sometimes the derating factor due to armature reaction is given that will be taken care of by k3 unless it is given you consider it to be one that means no demagnetizing it there is one simple problem okay let me show the problem first 
yeah this is the problem on that that just we discussed see in a short circuit test with arch neutral on a 132 kv three phase circuit breaker the power factor is given 0.3 that means sin phi you can calculate cos phi is given 0.3 recovery voltage was 0.95 of full load nine voltage the breaking current was symmetrical and restriking transient at a natural frequency of 16 kilowatt estimate the rate of rise of restriking volt okay before go, going through the restriking voltage i don't think it will be wise to discuss this so let us go sequentially okay we are discuss up to this now see active recovery voltage you have derived this phenomena the active recovery voltage just here this phenomena active re recovery voltage this is actually the voltage across this one when the circuit breaker contacts has just separated so now you will find see the rate of rise of restriking voltage what is the rate of rise of restriking voltage restriking voltage is the high frequency voltage so that voltage we can find out this is the rate of rise of this recovery voltage so it is ddt of this one so if you differentiate you will get this one now when this value will be maximum the rate of rise of restriking voltage will be maximum if we again differentiate with respect with respect to t this phenomena it is the expression we are getting this one now this will be equal to zero so restrike rate of restriking voltage will be maximum when t equal to this one okay pi by 2 into root over lc we are getting this from this derivation now so the maximum rate of rise of recovery voltage we substitute this value of t into the recovery voltage rate of rise of recovery voltage into this equation so we will get this value so maximum rate of rise of recovery voltage is this one so what is the average value of rate of rise of recycling voltage average value is calculated as peak value divided by time taken to reach the peak value okay the peak value you know it is twice the maximum value it is almost twice the vr so twice of vr divided by the time taken okay no not twice of vr it is the active recovery voltage is taken as vr and the time that is taken pi root lc by 2 okay pi root lc by 2 and this is the peak we consider vr as the peak restriking voltage that you find out from the problem okay if it is not given the peak value then if it is given rms value multiply it by root 2 to get the peak value and if the derating factor is not given you should not consider any derating factor if it is given you consider like this okay Now, for maximum restriking voltage, I told you that this value equal to one, so t equal to pi root lc. Now, the whole of this thing, this restriking voltage, if you are asked to find out the average value of restriking voltage, if you are asked to find out the rate of restriking voltage, rate of rise of restriking voltage, then one example is given here. See. the maximum voltage across the contacts of a circuit breaker when it breaks a short circuit current at current zero that means voltage maximum okay the frequency of the transient oscillation you have to find out the maximum voltage across the contacts you need to find out average rate of rise of restriking voltage you need to find out at the up to the first peak of oscillation because in the first Mm -hmm. oscillation only that it has maximum value so first oh so these are the given values okay so what is the active recovery voltage active recovery voltage you know it is the it is the maximum value okay at which the breaker contacts are op are open uh, have just opened at which the breaker contacts have just opened so it is root 2 of this value peak value of the symmetrical component peak value of the system voltage okay so this is a system voltage what is the restriking voltage 
with striking voltage it can reach the maximum value can be twice of this value the peak value so this is the striking voltage we will consider the maximum value because the maximum voltage across the contacts of a circuit breaker so maximum value can be twice of this value though so we can take some directing factor 0.8 or like that but if it is not mentioned better not to take anything just you take twice the value what is the frequency of oscillation frequency of oscillation is 1 by 2 pi lc that we have already seen frequency of oscillation of that restriking voltage it is of that restriking voltage that we have found out earlier also see this is a natural frequency of oscillation okay so so 1 by 2 pi root lc so this is the natural frequency of oscillation now average value of this rate of rise of restriking voltage they have shown the derivation here but instead of going through the derivation you can just put this one 2 by pi average Rate of rise of striking voltage twice V R by pi root L C. You will get the same value. Okay, you please take it, and you will get the same value. Clear? Okay. So this problem you solve this problem. You remember this this formula. Average value of rate of striking voltage is the peak striking voltage divided by time required to reach the peak value. Here you cannot use any form factor, peak factor formula for sinusoidal because it is not really sinusoidal. Okay, so you have to use this equation. Another problem, I will just go through this problem. In a short circuit test that I was about to discuss, uh, this is the phenomena given. This is the voltage given. All these things given: recovery voltage, power factor. Natural frequency of oscillation given. So formula is this one. K1, K2, active recovery voltage. Formula is this one because you know active recovery. Just we have already discussed. It is yes. This is the voltage. Okay, sine theta. So K1, K2, K3. We take all these conditions in form of K1, K2, and K3. Now. so this is the original formula now what is given what is the line to neutral voltage 132 by root 3 what is really the peak value this is v max isn't it so v max will be peak value will be into root 3 actually if we use this divided by root 3 then we will get the line to neutral voltage okay because uh, you have to be very specific uh, what is the question rate of rise of striking voltage anyway this is the actually the line to neutral voltage now k1 why k1 and k2 one because i think no demagnetizing effect is given and also you say assume the fault is grounded i told you neutral is considered as grounded if the fault is grounded then this k3 will k2 will be one if the fault is not grounded k2 would be 1.5 Okay, and this power factor has been given, so you can easily find out what is sine theta, and you substitute here. Okay, so what will be V R? V R will be this one. But what is the question? Rate of rise of restriking voltage. So maximum restriking voltage is twice of this value. Twice of this value. This is the active recovery voltage. So maximum value can be twice of this value. Time taken to reach the maximum value is one by twice f n. Okay, time taken to this maximum value is already been discussed. The time taken to reach this maximum value is actually this one. Okay, so you substitute here the value value and find out the average value is peak restriking voltage by time taken to reach the peak value. Okay, so. to find out and see it is very 
height it is in the order of megavolt that to power microsecond okay so is it clear all of you yes ma'am so oh, i can understand it will only be very much clear if you go don't go through the class notes or you don't go through any book but go through your book and i will supply you the whole material that means this um, because i don't want to divide it because i will i will uh, discuss the rest of portion of this slide in the next class but i will provide you the whole slide today only okay ma'am clear so circuit breaker is very important you have circuit breaker in my class in my part and you have relay in the other part isn't it so the two protective devices you need to understand the full theory of this circuit breakers and also the relays because relay will sense the fault and circuit breaker will get the signal from the relay and it will trip the circuit so let us end the class here again i will meet you next wednesday and discuss the rest of i think i will need two or three more classes to cover the circuit breaker okay okay ma'am okay thank you all thank you thank you ma'am